There's something about you. There's something about people who dare to be unapologetically themselves in a world filled with filters, poses, and masks. What you see is what you get, an incredibly magnetic trait. It's a rare superpower and it's called authenticity. Do you have that superpower? Do you want to make that superpower grow to have an amazing life that also spills onto others? We're gonna get into that today. We're in the legacy series and today it's going to be your legacy of authenticity. We're gonna discuss why it's hard to be authentic and ways to get over that and ways to hone our skills to be, let out our truly authentic selves. Even if we feel like we are authentic, sometimes we can feel pressure to get back inside that box. So we're gonna break out of that box and this channel is here for your inspirational wellness to help you break out of those mental struggles, break out of your comfort zones, get out of those boxes, and also at the website, which you can see in the description. I'm Nurse Anne, I'm a certified emergency and mental health registered nurse on the front lines for many years and still going, going and this channel is here for you. So we're gonna jump into some really interesting media and then some verses that back that up about being authentic today. And then at the end, there's always the prize, which I'll tell you about soon. It's an exciting prize that you don't want to miss. So let's get started. The first is from the media site from Medium, and it's titled, Why Do We Love? Why Do You Love Authentic People But Still Find It Hard to Be Authentic Yourself? Letting go of self-consciousness, self-consciousness to live a happier life. And as I said, we feel like there's something about people who dare to be unapologetically themselves in a world filled with filters, poses, and masks. What you see is what you get an incredibly magnetic trait. We look up to them, want them as friends, and for some reason, sometimes trust them quickly. It is that rare superpower. It's called authenticity. And as I said, do you have that rare superpower what stops you from being authentic leave that in the comments and please follow and share being authentic means being genuine and real you know yourself embrace yourself and fully own yourself not only does that make you much more appealing to others but research has also proven that authentic people are much more satisfied with their lives it makes all the sense in the world authentic people are not afraid to follow their path no matter what it is, they do what feels right and what comes naturally to them. They fully embrace themselves rather than trying to fit into the mold. Do you feel like you're squeezed into that mold of what others want you to be and what you see around you? And they're also able to build much deeper, more genuine and more meaningful connections with others. At the end of the day, wouldn't you rather Spend time with someone who values being true to themselves than someone who only ever tells you what you think, what they think you should be saying. So why do we struggle with being authentic? Do you ever struggle with that? I think that we all do, even if we consider ourselves to be a creative, creative and authentic person. In some situations, it can be hard, hard to shine your true radiant self. And I want that for you because authenticity is beautiful, so is vulnerability with boundaries in the right situations. So why do we struggle with being authentic? They ask at this site, you get the point. Authentic people are awesome. Many of us disregard that fact completely and stay on the other end of the spectrum for the majority of our lives. I don't want that to happen to you. There's no real common sense and sound logic in this scenario. Being authentic does make us happier. And it's also more appealing to the people around us. Still, we decide to shrink ourselves down to fit the mold. And for what? As I said at this channel, it's here to help you break out of those boxes and get over your mental struggles, work on your emotional intelligence, and so much more. So we're going to get through these um, exciting articles, get onto some scripture, and then the prize, which I'll tell you about soon. So why do we struggle with being authentic? Here's the painful truth. We'd rather be liked than be real. 
Sometimes we don't want to stand out from the crowd too much, don't want to make anyone mad. What if they don't like me? All these people pleaser, yes not or thought patterns come together and solidify into a facade you keep up just to avoid having to deal with judgment. Has that happened to you this week? Leave that in the comments if you like. We worry that if we speak and live our truth and go for what we want, people will think something about us. They'll judge us. They'll talk about us. Here comes the pump punchline. People don't care enough about you to think badly about you. People usually only think about themselves. Um, and a Deb Nobleman PhD wrote a great article about the science behind this and explains that our brains default is to think about ourselves. When we do think about somebody else, it's usually to wonder what they think about us. Sure, some people will have a negative opinion about you, but the truth is, truth is we'll never be able to look inside their brain and your objective reality doesn't change as a result of one person's opinion of you. Our self-consciousness is the culprit. I do have a lot of other videos scroll back about your emotional intelligence and just helping you get over that kind of stuff. Nobody's thinking about you, so you might as well just live your life in the way you want. All this sounds incredible in theory. In practice, it turns out, is not as easy as it sounds. That's because we have a thing called self-consciousness riding shotgun in our brain. We're in the driver's seat, but our self-consciousness is giving us directions. Don't go there. No, turn back. That's a dead end. Turn the other way. Our self-consciousness is our awareness of our own being, the way we look and behave, the things we say. But ironically enough, we get excessively conscious of ourselves when we are around others. Self-consciousness isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can help us make sure we act in socially appropriate ways to avoid disapproval from society. And it's good to have that cognitive function. Self-consciousness can go well beyond keeping us sane. It has the power to completely drown us in anxiety and unhappiness. I don't want you to get stuck in anxiety and unhappiness. No, no, no. You have creative power, superpowers to release. We can get so caught up in how we could appear to others and what they might think of us that we're left paralyzed by our self-consciousness. We can get scared and would rather be completely safe from external judgment than to live our best lives regardless of what people might think. So how do you let go of the self-consciousness? In order to be authentic, we need to kick this excessive self-consciousness to the teeth. Unfortunately, being human doesn't come with an instructions manual. There's no button we can simply switch off. There's merely new beliefs that we need to reprogram in our minds. It's so loud, give me one second. There's no button we can simply switch off. There's merely new beliefs that we need to reprogram in our minds. Here's one of them. You're not that important. You might feel a little disheartened by this. Personally, they say, I think it's an incredible relief. No planet will explode if you decided to shave your head or move to a deserted island. Nobody's spending their entire day thinking about you or the things you did or didn't do. Nobody goes to sleep thinking, I didn't really like his outfit today. They're too busy thinking about themselves or the stupid things they once said eight years ago. If you're getting in your own way again, overthinking everyone's judgment of you, remind yourself that everybody mainly thinks about themselves. You're not that important. Who is your authentic you? With training to become less self-conscious comes a great gift of growing authenticity. When you stop caring so much about what other people think, you get complete freedom in being yourself. People have their opinions regardless of what you do, so you might as well just do what you want. It's all up to you, you decide. Deep down, you already know who you are. And if you haven't discovered your creative gifts, your passions, what you like doing, you can always start each and every day. It's an ongoing, lifelong journey. So get started. You know what you like doing most of the time. You know what aesthetic you're drawn to, and you have at least more or less of an idea of what kind of life you'd like to live. What are your values? What sets your soul on fire? What kind of person would you like to be? Who is your most authentic you? Stop showing up as your facade you and start showing up as your authentic you. 
Whatever you do, stop shrinking your identity down just to fit into the mold of your self-assigned place in society or your job description. Sometimes we might present ourselves in that conveniently normal way to our external environment, but when we're unapologetically ourselves, we can be expressive, creative, sensitive, intuitive, artistic, and just showing our authentic self. Showing up as your authentic self is that lifelong process and sometimes it feels a little messy. So we need to first acknowledge our self-consciousness and the obstacle it can form in our lives. Realizing just how much time we spend denying our nature just to make sure we don't cause any ripples is heartbreaking. So we don't want to look back later and wish that we had taken that chance on ourselves. So be you, you and your environment will thank you for it. And Eckhart Tolle said, only the truth of who you are, if realized, will set you free. And another one is 11 signs you aren't being fully authentic is by Dr. Jennifer Huggins, Psych D. I'm going to read you a few excerpts from that and then we'll get on to a couple more and get to the prize, which is the end. I read you a quick, short, action-packed chapter of my published fictional drama where you get to ride along with the frontline workers rescuing those in crisis a mental physical and spiritual and you know it's full of action adventure along with advocacy and awareness for you and the struggles that people go through and she says that we might struggle to be authentic due to lack of self-esteem fear of judgment by others and a strong desire for others to like us past experiences perhaps from childhood that led to being shut down when we spoke our truth can mistakenly teach us that it isn't safe to be genuine Learning as an adult that our truth matters and that we matter becomes essential to developing our authentic self. Sometimes when you're not authentic, you can su suffer from low self-worth, depression, lack of intimacy in our relationships. Others won't be able to get to know who you really are if you're censoring and showing up as someone other than you with all your unique thoughts, beliefs, and emotional desires. And she gives us 11 signs that you aren't being fully authentic. Number one, you question what you say to others. Self-doubt, second-guessing. Number two is that people-pleasing. Saying what we believe the other person wants to hear versus how we really feel. Focusing on the other person's needs and wants versus our own. Number three, comparing ourselves to others comes down to self-esteem and how we feel about ourselves. Number four, distrust of others. And we do need to have healthy, wise boundaries for sure. Number five, preoccupation with others' faults. Number six, lying. Lying to others creates a wall between you and the other person. One cannot know who you really are when lies are at play. And speaking of that, we're in this legacy series. We've worked on your legacy of kindness, truth telling, um, advocacy for others, helping others win, being wise, and there's some other ones, if you scroll back, you will see that in our legacy series. And as I said, our legacy isn't just for the future, it's all for, also for now, as we go, to build your life legacy that hopefully also, not only helps you, but spills on to the lives of those you care about and those that you encounter as you go. Number seven, staying quiet or stonewalling during an argument, shutting down. Number eight, not forging your own path. Traveling a life path that uniquely expresses who you are, what your passions are, and what you desire is the embodiment, embodiment of authentic living. If you find yourself living a life for others and making life choices based on insecurity rather than your true purpose, your authenticity, authenticity will be negatively impacted. Number nine, not being humble. So be able to admit your faults and your mistakes leads to genuineness within yourself and in your relationships. If you're frequently defending your position with others, not being introspective about your role in the situation, or insecurely inflating your importance at the expense of others, genuineness is lost. How do you love this background noise? Number 10, lack of empathy. Being able to understand another's emotional experience and being open to what other people's thoughts versus caught up in our own is the basis of empathy. 
empathy. When we're not empathetic, we don't give permission to the other person to be their most authentic self. We also lose out on being our most genuine self by not opening to another's experience. And number 11, not thinking for yourself. Being easily swayed by others and not sticking to your own values and beliefs. And she offers us some solutions if you're struggling with being authentic, setting boundaries. Sometimes you have to say no and shift away from that people pleasing, develop self-compassion and self-love, do mirror work, Look directly in your eyes in the mirror several times a day and tell yourself you love yourself. Um, celebrate the things that you do like about yourself and keep a list of these things that you can read over daily. Ask yourself what's missing in your relationships. Is it intimacy and closeness? If so, practice being open, honest, and direct in your relationships. Tackle issues in your relationships right away. Don't let them fester and build resentment. Navigate the path of your life by your values. What's most important to you? Are you living your life based on these truisms? Authenticity deepens the relationship you have with yourself and with others. Being authentic means something. It actually means everything. And that was a great art article by Dr. Jennifer Huggins. Better Up tells us at this site, being your authentic self is easier said than done, but it's worth it. So let's give a quick, quick few things of how they tell us to do that. What does that mean to be authentic? What does that mean to you to be authentic? Real and genuine. So eight strategies from them to develop authenticity. Number one, de define and embrace your strengths. They're one of the most energizing ways that we can tap into our authenticity. They gave some examples of sometimes you might make people feel welcome. Maybe you are a good planner. You're a good teacher. Pay attention to things you're good at, but that you don't really enjoy. And you might be able to reduce the use of these so that you can, you could dial up the strengths that you're best at and love using. Number two, explore your values. Your values and integrity are important. It does actually help you to be more authentic when you're tapped into your values and your integrity. Number three, acknowledge external. This versus internal influence and look at your internal self-talk. Number four, notice and name your emotions and feelings. Number five, practice mindfulness, living in the moment, that self-introspection, not getting so caught up in rumination and worry about the future, but think about what's going on right now and how we can get through that. And it also builds your self-esteem. Number six, build your social support system, connect to the people and um, families. Number seven, develop the courage to face your fears and don't have that list of Things you'd love to do if only built, work on getting past that and do those things and develop your sense of adventure. Number eight, take daily actions towards authenticity. Keep in mind that authenticity is a practice, which means it takes patience, time, and dedication to doing it. One way you can build up your muscle of authenticity is to take small daily actions that align once again with your values. A couple more and then we're going to get into some verses and then the prize how to be authentic by wiki 12 steps accept yourself for you who you are support that self esteem we all have valid thoughts once again act on your personal belief and values that's a great recurring theme helping others being honest and true number four put time into personal growth we definitely need to take time introspection, prayer, getting to know God, getting to know ourselves, our strengths, our triggers, our weaknesses, and working on those. You can do that on your own with therapy, with coaches, counselors, different videos, books. There's so many ways that we can incorporate to work on ourselves. Um, behave authentically, be fully present in whatever circumstances you find yourself. Trust your intuition when it comes to behavior and relationships. But we do have to work on our intuition, building into it wise, a wise foundation so we're not fooled and tricked. And, and we do want those boundaries. Express your thoughts and feelings. Ask people, people for help when you need it. Do you find that hard to do? I do sometimes. 
be vulnerable. Vulnerability can be, I read that, that vulnerability is, is, um, I can't remember, but it, it definitely comes down to being vulnerable is courageous, but it's actually very beautiful. And just do that with boundaries. Treating other people with authenticity. Don't put on a different face or personality for social functions. Simply be yourself. Don't tell lies. Maintain long-term relationships. And that was from the Wiki 12 Steps. And so now we're gonna get on a couple of the verses and then we'll get to the bonus and the prize. Hopefully we get out of here quick so you can go on to your next video or the things that you have to do. But make sure you please follow this channel, like it, share it, leave your comments. And nurseand.com is the website you can see in the description. It's a lot of things there to help you stay inspired, encourage, help you learn how to create and also how to be authentic and break out of boxes. That's for you. And it's definitely inspiring inspirational wellness for you and in the some of the verses um this is from the site marissa diamore and she actually gives us bible verses for authenticity and the first one is um romans 12 2 don't conform to the pattern of the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so we can conform to a lot of times media culture others around us what everyone is doing the crowd sometimes we can feel the pressure to conform instead of being transformed by the renewing of our mind by the word and integrity in first samuel 16 7 god said to samuel don't consider his appearance or his height because he had actually rejected him Get a drink of water, everyone. It's so good for your health and to have healthy cells. Don't you want that? But then he reminded us that God doesn't look at the pe things, the outward appearance that people look at, the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at our heart and our integrity. So that's really important to work on. It helps us to stay authentic. <clears throat> In Galatians 1.10 Reminds us, are we now trying to win the approval of people or of God? Are we trying to just trying to please people and be people pleasers instead of trying to please God? When we work on trying to please him, it's going to help our character and our integrity and to be more authentic. And Matthew 5, 16 reminds us in the same way, let your light shine before others that they can see your good deeds and glorify God. So don't forget to let your light shine. And that's the end of the media and the verses for right now. Uh, hopefully it's quicker for you today. So we're gonna jump onto the bonus and the prize now. First, I wanna show you, um, I have some devotionals that's gonna help you actually with mental healing, with being authentic, with connecting with others. And my latest is the Ignite Life, the upside down, Ignite Life Poetry Devotional by Nurse Anne, and that is um, helping us as we go to dare to inspire and bless everyone in our path. Because you know what? The life stories that we encounter daily are filled with struggle, triumph, joy, sorrow, self-doubt, and everything in between. So I want to challenge you to discover the stories of others as they, and help them to also be more authentic. So this is filled with a lot of spoken word that I just started doing of real intense struggles and life situations that people go through in the world and then there's also devotional in there for you so ignite life poetry devotional link at the website you're going to love that it was a lot of fun to do and mental healing poetry to devotional also by nurse and we all need mental healing and mental healing emotional intelligence that's going to help us be more authentic and there's also a lot of life challenges in here along with god ordained courage and healing to help us turn away from those mindsets controlled by fear so that you can be authentic it's e inspiration to step into your true destiny of a faith walk and purpose-driven path mental healing by nurse and me inspiration battles devotional soul searching with a dose of encouragement encouragement there's also biblical medicine for real life link on the website word puzzles devotional there's a lot of interesting and unique words in here explain and then a devotional it's actually a lot of fun to read but it gives us a lot of insight and wisdom you want to know what else is in here 
There's a medicine for your soul in the word puzzles devotional. Hope and new light for your life journey. I want you to overcome. Yes, get some medicine. Get your dose of medicine for your soul. And there's also energized health, body, mind, and spirit. Because you know what? Body, mind, and spirit work together in synergy. So let's go. Let's jump on to the bonus and the prize now. As I said, I'm nurse and I'm a certified emergency, a mental health registered nurse. And in my free time, I created the six part drama series so you can ride along on the with the frontline workers, the community, the church, the family, and see what people go through in the ER and mental health and emergency, and also what you go through and those that you take care of. We've already finished book one, which was Sheep Among Wolves, and book two, Dr. John Doe. In those, we talked about thought disorders, memory disorders, Alzheimer's, people struggling with hallucinations and homelessness. Also, you met the frontline workers and see them as they continue in each story. And this is meant to be a television drama series, One Day With Your Help. And then we also finished A Tent Under the Bridge. Um, you got to see some of the same characters and what they went through. That's very exciting, crime, danger, and a lot of advocacy for homelessness. We're now in Defenders of the Week. We talk about people getting bullied and dealing with anxiety, along with the relationship drama and the um, action of the same frontline workers, the nurses, the police, the caseworkers, the doctors, um, the community, the church, social workers, paramedics, just everyone is in there. You might even see yourself. And then the next one is going to be ready, willing, and able. We talk about autism spectrum disabilities and how people can actually shine in any situation, break out of boxes and be their actual superheroes with their unique, authentic abilities. And then the season finale is out of control. You are going to love that. We also talk about relapse, addiction, entitled patients, entitled people, and you get to see the culmination of the relationship. It's super exciting. And as I said, with your help, it will be a television drama. I'm about to read you that quick action pack chapter. I just want to show you it's all in one book, The Mental Falls First Six Stories Edition by Nurse Anne. You can ride along on this book club. You can see them all for free on the podcast. And it's also in an audio book because we don't always have time to read. And it was brought to life by Drama Simpson. I'm going to show you the cover. It's on Audible and iTunes. He brought it to life with action noises, siren noises, different characters. You're gonna love it. I promise you're gonna feel like you're right there in the action. Get a hold of that, The Mental Files by Nurse Anne, The Mental Files, first six stories edition, Audible and iTunes. You are gonna have a lot of fun with that. If you do, make sure you leave a review so you can help it be that television drama series one day. Let's jump in now to the bonus and the prize, and then you're going to get out of here. So when we're there, we're in the Mental Files Defenders of the Week, we talk about somebody going through anxiety and bullying, how they help each other in that situation, and also the frontline workers drum. So we just finished chapter three, which was um, Honest Revelations. We're now in chapter four, No Rest for the Weary. Are you ready? Are you being authentic? Leave that in the comments, like, share, follow. As the paramedics brought their patient through the waiting room and the emergency room to get to triage, Chandra noticed it was worse than she feared. Chandra noticed that every chair was taken with sick people and their angry, angry family members. And of course, all eyes turned toward her. She knew the routine. They would watch her like a hawk to ensure she didn't get to go to the back before they did. They'd been waiting for hours, and just because she arrived in an ambulance was no excuse. Chandra's anxiety started to ramp up to panic again. Breathe, she quietly told herself. Sensing the worries of the college girl, paramedic Maria asked the triage nurse if there was any way that Chandra could have a, a room, a bed in the back. Maria wondered if Kylina, Nurse Kylina, had already clocked out. Her ER nurse friend would surely be able to help them out of this situation. Not any time soon was, re was the reply of the triage staff. It must be a full moon. Every bed and even the hallway stretchers are packed. Maria decided to try another avenue. Oh, hey, is Kylina working today? She just went 
home, replied the seasoned nurse, who knew what Maria must be up to. Maria wasn't ready to give up yet. Well, my patient has some self-inflicted wounds and should not be left alone. She whispered to the nurse as they stepped into the hall. Over here, thanks for the info, but I'll have security sit with her until a bed opens up, replied the nurse. Unfortunately, I don't think that will be any time soon. Overhearing the grim news of the long wait times, Chandra decided to just deal with the inevitable. After the nurse documented her vital signs, assessed the wound and asked the usual questions, she released Chandra back to the waiting room, seated next to Marcos, the security officer. Of course, the waiting room crowd was definitely going to stare at her and wonder why she had to have a babysitter. To make matters more embarrassing, Chandra asked for paper and pencil to pass the time. Sorry, no can do. The nurse told me you're on the injury prevention protocol, replied Marcos, just a bit too loud for Chandra's comfort level. Settling in for the usual shame and embarrassment, she tried to focus on whatever was playing on the TV screen. Hours later, the staff finally offered her a sandwich and informed her that the psychiatric team was on the way to talk to her. After the staff administered Chandra's tetanus shot, they gave her a sandwich and juice. Please don't let the evaluation be in the waiting room, she quietly hoped. So much for privacy. After the mental health staff talked with the patient, the decision was made to admit her to the fifth floor psychiatric unit. Preparations were made and a report was called to the unit. Chandra knew she had to call her family and school, but decided she would wait until she was transferred to her next destination. And the next chapter is gonna be chapter five, Workday Surprises. Don't forget, this is an exciting audiobook on Audible and iTunes. The Mental Falls First Six Stories edition by Nurse and narrated by Drama, Drama Simpsons. I'm going to see you at the next Nurse and Dot podcast. You better be there. And don't forget to be authentically yourself because it is so amazing and beautiful. Stay authentic. See you there.